welcome everyone in today's lecture we will discuss what are the roles of essential elements in particularly we will be discussing what are the roles of macronutrients macro elements in plant physiology right children so we are doing a chapter mineral nutrition in mineral nutrition we are telling there are certain elements which are essential which are required by the plant body now did you uh, ask and uh, try to solve the answer like what role do essential elements perform why are they called essential we'll try to answer this question first okay so what role do essential elements perform right so why are we calling them as essential what role do essential elements uh, perform why are they called essential let's try to answer this why are they called essential elements right now why are they called essential elements means we will tell they have some roles and they need to fulfill the roles right what are the roles let us try to understand in ncrt clearly they have mentioned that essential elements help in the permeability of the cell membrane so cell membrane is selectively permeable is semi permeable when cell membrane permits then only the particles from outside can enter into the cell likewise the particles which are present inside the cell can go out of the cell means permeability is very important and who is taking care of the permeability cell membrane and who helps the permeability ions minerals helps in the permeability that's the first role what is the first role essential elements helps in permeability of the cell membrane let me write down so essential elements right means minerals they help in permeability of cell membrane they help the membrane to permit the substances across now what are those elements which help in permeability calcium you know cation it always goes this side that side k plus also h plus also while they are going outside they take the other particles towards outside while they are coming inside they bring the particles inside so what are the ions which help in increasing the permeability means examples if we have to take so the familiar example is ca plus ca2 plus k plus and h plus amma so these help in increasing the permeability more now that is one function permeability is increasing means cell requires it then second function maintaining the osmotic concentration of the second uh, cell sap right essential elements they maintain the concentration they maintain the concentration or shall we write osmotic concentration essential elements maintain the osmotic concentration of cell sap see the cell should maintain its size it should maintain its shape right only then it is active it can do its function now if the cell is shrunken it's uh, plasmalized then also the cell is not active and if the cell is turgid and too much taking water also then also it is not active so that means how many minerals should be there how much solute should be there in the cell if that is there in that concentration then the cell can do its all vital functions now who will decide that solute concentration minerals will decide the solute concentration so essential elements maintain that solute concentration osmotic concentration inside the cell so under this what essential elements will maintain the solute concentration means all the major essential elements so if we have to list down some examples here we can tell all major elements so whatever elements we know so all of them they will be within the cell in required concentration so which will help the cell to maintain its shape which will help the cell to maintain its concentration now third function they act as components of electron transport system essential elements act as components of electron transport system so ncrt says that essential elements they act as components of ets we will tell what is ets electron transport 
system they act as constituents of electron transport system now where do we come across electron transport system now in photosynthesis and respiration in photosynthesis and respiration to make the currency atp electrons should move from one carrier to other carrier from that carrier to other carrier during the movement of electrons via electron carriers energy gets accumulated that energy will help in synthesis of atp and nadp and there are certain elements which act as electron carriers which are components of electron carriers that is what is electron transport system so they act as components of electron transport system so in photosynthesis in respiration we'll see in detail the complete process of ets so complex 1 complex 2 ferridoxin cytochrome oxidase like that some elements will be there if we have to list down some examples copper mineral is a constituent of ets then iron also sulfur also these are the elements which are the components of electron transport system shall i give the examples under this one i'm telling copper is a constituent of electron transport system iron also children sulfur also are the constituents of electron transport system and what does it help in it help in energy generation so electron transport system helps in atp synthesis okay that means copper iron and sulfur are indirectly helping in making the energy currency so and what is the fourth role of essential elements means they tell essential elements they do buffering action they do buffering action do you know what do you mean by buffering action a buffer is a one which resists change in ph and it maintains the ph as it is for example if you want to maintain a system with an optimal ph of 7 you add a buffer buffer will take care of it even if acid is added there is no change in the ph even if base is added there is no change in the ph so buffer is one which resists change in ph which will not allow the ph to change and there are some ions which can act as buffers so buffer buffering action means what did i tell they maintain they help to maintain constant ph they help to maintain constant ph buffer means it resists change in ph now what are the ions we can take as examples which resist change in ph means we can take the examples of sodium carbon oxygen these are the examples which can act as buffers which maintains the ph at a constant range so then next function see how many functions we are telling that is why they are called essential elements they are doing so many functions first function they increase the permeability second function they maintain the osmotic concentration third function they are components of electron transport system fourth function they are helping in buffering action next one they help in enzymatic activity also they help in plant metabolism also they help in maintaining enzyme activity means they are participating in metabolism we already know this we already discussed that elements act as activators for many enzymes right magnesium in the previous lecture we discussed it is an activator for the key enzymes of photosynthesis like rubisco and pepks so and minerals they have act as activators and they help in enzymatic activities enzyme activity what do they do elements act as either activator or inhibitor for enzymes that means they have an ability to control the metabolic reactions so if we want so many examples are there what are the enzymes which act as activators and inhibitors so let us write down some magnesium is an activator for photosynthetic enzymes and respiratory enzymes zinc is an activator for alcohol dehydrogenase we discussed in the previous class molybdenum is an activator molybdenum is an activator for dinitrogenase helps in nitrogen metabolism this is another function next ncrt says it acts as a major constituent of macromolecules essential elements act as major 
constituents of macro molecules which will build the plant. So, fifth, sixth function we can write essential elements. They act as major constituents. They act as major constituents of macromolecules. What are the macromolecules, biomolecules which will make the plant body? They are carbohydrates. Then next comes as protein. Next comes as fats and nucleic acids. Come on, tell me what are the elements which make carbohydrates? Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. So, these are essential elements only. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Proteins, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen with sulfur. Sulfur containing amino acids will be there. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and sulfur are seen in proteins. Fat, fatty acids only, acetic acid, butyric acid, propionic acid, palmitic acid, all are having C, H and O only. So, fats are made up of C, H and O. Nucleic acids, amma, they are made up of nitrogen bases. They have ATP, GTP, P, phosphate is there. So, nucleic acids are made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen and phosphorus. So, See, all these are essential elements, right? CHO are essential element. S is also essential element. N and P are also essential elements, right, children? So, what NCRT says is correct only. They are the major constituents of macromolecules like carbohydrates, proteins, fats and nucleic acids. Not only this, NCRT says that essential element act as major constituents of coenzymes also. So, the last point what NCRT says is essential elements are constituents of what coenzymes essential elements are constituents of coenzymes examples of coenzymes come on recollect nad is one coenzyme fad is another coenzyme biotin is another coenzyme now nad nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate nad what is it made up carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen phosphorus right so nad contains carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen p is also there nad p now fad we have to tell same FAD but phosphorus will not be there. C, H, O, N will be there. Biotin, amma, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur will be there in the structure of biotin. So, come on, check. Three elements I wrote here. 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 So, among these elements, all are essential elements only what we have listed. So, they have so many roles then. Our question is, what roles do essential elements perform? On what basis are you calling them as essential elements? NCRT has given the answer in seven points. It tells they help in permeability. They maintain the osmotic concentration. They are components of electron transport system. They help in buffering action. They act as activators for enzymes. Enzymes, they are major constants of biomolecules, not only biomolecules, they are constants of coenzymes also. Understood children, take a screenshot, then we will talk about the macro elements first. Right, now. We understood what are essential elements and what roles do they have in maintaining the plant metabolism. And then how many essential elements are there? 17. In that 17, the elements which are required in more concentrations are called macro elements. Right? And we told out of 17 essential elements, 9 are macro 8 are micro right now let us talk about macro elements so how many essential elements are there 17 essential elements are there you need to remember them 17 essential elements are there out of the 17 9 they come under macro elements 
नाइन दे कम अंडर मैक्रो एलिमेंट्स वाई आर दे कॉल्ड एस मैक्रो एलिमेंट्स बिकॉज देयर कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इज मोर इन द प्लांट टिश्यू हाउ मच मोर मोर दैन टेन मिली मोल्स पर के जी ड्राई मैटर ऑफ द प्लांट टिश्यू इफ एनी एलिमेंट इज फाउंड देन कॉल इट एज अ मैक्रो एलिमेंट ओनली वॉट इज मैक्रो एलिमेंट द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ the element the concentration of the element is more than how much 10 milli moles per kg dry matter per kg dry weight if the concentration of the element is more than 10 milli moles per kg dry matter then yes it is a macro element how many are there in the plant which are at this concentration nine are there what is the code we made to remember macro elements i told you to remember 3 3 3 so i told you to remember cho carbon hydrogen oxygen are the major molecules right cho you can remember easily then i told next three is mpn mpn means most probable number that's the way i remember mpn means when we count e coli bacteria in the sample in the milk sample in the water sample we tell mpn most probable number then this uh, ipl csk team is there right so remember the third category as csk now the nine elements how to remember them we made a code cho mpn csk these nine are macro elements their concentration is more than 10 milli moles per kg dry matter now plants obtain these elements in which form they will ask us once in neat examination they have asked us plants are absorbing these elements in which form that we will see in ncert under each paragraph they have given carbon is absorbed as co2 water uh, hydrogen is absorbed as water o2 is absorbed as gaseous form in every para they have given but i will try to keep it under one table so that it will be easy for us to memorize so macro one table we will see micro one table we will see right so element we will write here and its ionic form ionic form absorbed by the plant its ionic form absorbed by the plant so how many elements we need to list is nine the first one is carbon right cho second one is hydrogen and the third element will be oxygen the fourth element will be magnesium and the fifth uh, element will be phosphorus Sixth element is nitrogen, and seven is calcium there, and eighth one is sulphur, and ninth one is potassium. Right. So now carbon. What is the uh, symbol? C is the symbol. Hydrogen. What is the symbol? H. oxygen o is the symbol magnesium mg is the symbol phosphorus p is the symbol nitrogen n is the symbol calcium ca is the symbol s and k are the symbols right now carbon is absorbed by the plant in gaseous form it is in the form of co2 carbon dioxide is absorbed by the plant in gaseous form that is co2 hydrogen is absorbed in gaseous form also liquid form also it is as h2o in water vapor form also it can absorb through liquid state also it can absorb oxygen again in gaseous form only in the form of o2 plant absorbs oxygen in the form of o2 magnesium plant absorbs magnesium as divalent cation plant absorbs magnesium as divalent cation plant absorbs phosphorus as anion so what is that h2po4 minus or hpo4 2 minus it absorbs plant absorbs phosphorus as two anions either h2po4 minus or hpo4 2 minus in these states plants absorb it nitrogen plant absorbs in cationic form also anionic form also but mainly it absorbs as nitrate form no3 minus mainly plant absorbs in this form what are the other forms also 
NO2 minus is also there and ammonium form is also there. Since plant is absorbing nitrogen in anionic forms also, cationic forms, both the forms it can absorb. But mainly it absorbs nitrate ion. Okay, children. Then calcium like divalent magnesium. Plant absorbs calcium as divalent calcium ion, cation. Sulfur it absorbs as SO42 minus anionic form plant absorbs sulfur and potassium cation only it is K plus. So I have seen one neat question asking like in which form elements are absorbed by the plant. So in NCRT also we have this information but under each element they have given. But what my feeling is if we study all together at one place it will be easy to remember. So that's why we have done in this manner. So we started with nine macro elements. Nine macro elements are CHO, MPN and CSK. Why are they macro? Means their concentration is more than 10 millimoles per kg dry weight. And then what are their ionic forms? Plants absorb those macronutrients in which forms? This is a table. Carbon plant absorbs in gaseous form. Oxygen in gaseous form. Hydrogen uh, like in the gas also or in the liquid state also. Whereas all these elements are ionic forms only. All these remaining six are ionic forms only. Magnesium Mg2 plus. Phosphorus H2PO4 minus and HPO4 2 minus. Nitrogen NO3, NO2 and NH4 plus ammonium ion. Calcium Ca plus. Sulfur SO4 2 minus. It is anionic form. Potassium K plus. Take a screenshot. Then we will talk about each and every element in detail. right now shall we start with cho among the micronutrients the first three elements are cho in our code also and we are telling that plant is not absorbing cho in ionic forms plant is absorbing cho in the gaseous form right so that means among the macronutrients cho are available in gaseous forms am i correct right so among macro nutrients plants absorb plants are absorbing carbon hydrogen and oxygen in gaseous forms am i correct it is absorbing in gaseous forms not in ionic form right not in mineral salt form it's absorbing in gaseous state from where from the atmosphere Plants are absorbing carbon, hydrogen, oxygen from the atmosphere in the form of gaseous state. So that is why we call them as non-mineral elements, right? What are they called? Since they are not absorbed in mineral forms, in ionic forms, in salt forms, we call them as non-mineral elements. So CHO are called as non-mineral elements, right? They are called non-mineral elements and they make up the carbohydrate, protein, fat, nucleic acid structures. So that's why they are also called as structural elements. They are also called as framework elements since they are making the biomolecules. We can also call them as structural elements. We can also call them as framework elements. Of course, they are essential elements. They are essential elements. Under essential elements, they are macro elements. They are major elements. Major elements means ama, they are macro elements. They are macro elements, right? And where do you find carbon, hydrogen and oxygen? Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, they make up the major biomolecules. So, they form the major mass. They make the major part of the dry matter of the plant. So, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, they make the major part of dry weight of plant why do they make major part of dry weight of plant body because they are making carbohydrates proteins fats and nucleic acids and since 
carbon hydrogen oxygen are present in each and every corner of the plant body plant will never show deficiency for carbon hydrogen and oxygen so we can tell cho are never deficit with the plant so carbon hydrogen oxygen are not deficient in the plant body they are never deficient in the plant body why are they not deficient in the plant body because they are making the major biomolecule so plant will not show any deficiency symptoms with c h and o any doubts till here so out of nine elements we discussed about three elements what are the three elements carbon hydrogen oxygen how do they take it in the form of gas co2 gas water vapor oxygen gas from the atmosphere since they are taking from the atmosphere not through the soil they are called as non mineral elements since they are making all the structures like carbohydrates proteins fats structural elements they make the framework of the plant body framework elements and they are essential for doing so many functions essential elements they are required by the plant in more concentrations macro elements and in the dry weight of the plant body these elements are only in more proportion that is why if they are in that much proportion if they are seen in carbohydrate protein fat nucleic acid what not so plant can never exhibit deficiency symptoms for this element after three the fourth element we will talk about nitrogen right so let me talk about the fourth element amma what is that it is nitrogen it is nitrogen right so why did i mention mpn is order magnesium and phosphorus then nitrogen should come why did i mention nitrogen as the fourth element after cho what is the next element which is found in the plant in greatest concentration is nitrogen so nitrogen it is absorbed by the plant in greater concentration so nitrogen is absorbed by plant in great concentrations it is absorbed by plant in great concentrations plant require this element in more concentrations understood and we already discussed in the previous table that nitrogen is absorbed both as cationic form also and ionic form also nitrogen is absorbed is absorbed as both cationic form and anionic form now what are the cationic forms tell me no3 minus and no2 minus what is that anionic form ammonium ion but mainly it absorbs as no3 minus right nitrogen is mainly absorbed as no3 form nitrogen is mainly absorbed as no3 form and nitrogen where does the plant need it it requires in the meristematic tissues meristematic tissues actively dividing tissue nitrogen is required and in the metabolically active tissue when a cell is doing respiration when a cell is doing photosynthesis when a cell is doing protein synthesis it's doing metabolism in actively metabol in metabolically active cells also nitrogen concentration should be more in actively dividing cell like meristematic cell also nitrogen concentration is more so we can tell that nitrogen is present more in meristematic tissue nitrogen is present more in which tissue ma meristematic tissue not only in the meristematic tissue it is also present more in the metabolically active cells in the metabolically active cells also nitrogen concentration is more in the plant and where is nitrogen seen in which elements is nitrogen seen come on tell me so nitrogen is constituent of nitrogen is constituent of purines are what are purines adenine and guanine nitrogens are there pyrimidines are thymine cytosine uracil there also nitrogen is there right so it is part of purine and pyrimidine means it is part of nucleic acid then it is part of nucleic acids right nitrogen is part of nucleic acids nitrogen is part of some vitamins nitrogen is part of some hormones nitrogen is constituent of vitamins 
nitrogen is constituent of hormones right and nitrogen where can we find we can find nitrogen in amino acids also right amino group so nitrogen is found in amino acids amma if it is found in amino acids amino acids only will make proteins it is found in proteins also and enzymes are proteins right so it is found in proteins enzymes also see how many places we are getting where nitrogen is there nitrogen is component of nitrogen bases like purines and pyrimidines which will make nucleic acids nitrogen is component of vitamins and hormones nitrogen is component of amino acids which make proteins and which make enzymes and then since nitrogen is constituent of enzymes we can tell nitrogen plays important role in metabolisms like replication uh, transcription translation photosynthesis all respiration all those things all the uh, physiology all the metabolic reactions are mediated by enzymes enzyme is made up of nitrogen so we can tell that nitrogen plays important role nitrogen plays important role in i'll write down here it plays important role in dna synthesis which we call replication nitrogen plays important role in replication nitrogen plays important role in protein synthesis it plays important role in photosynthesis also and it also plays important role in respiration also see for making dna what is replication making dna nucleic acids need nitrogen so it helps in replication protein synthesis is made up of proteins proteins are made up of amino acids amino amino has a nitrogen group so for protein synthesis nitrogen is required and photosynthesis in photosynthesis also nitrogen is required enzymes they do photosynthesis enzymes are required for respiration also we can tell nitrogen is required so all these are the functions of nitrogen take a screenshot right children so what did we discuss we discussed what are the roles of essential elements and we started macro elements we completed four elements carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen so next five elements we'll see it in the next lecture if the content is informative like share and do subscribe to my channel thank you